what a great opportunity it was for us uh, to you know, fly across the pond and rep represent this iconic, for, uh, uh, this iconic organization uh, to go play in that game uh, against a great team and a, a great quarterback, which I told you the week prior, and really happy with our resiliency as a, as a defense, uh, our effort. Uh, there was a lot of guys that made a lot of big plays in the game, and I was just really happy for them and uh, loved the result at the end. With that, I'll open it up with questions. Wink, is this a game, obviously, your former team, is this a game you've had circled for a long time or feel any different than normal? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's different just for this reason. I have a lot of friends on that other sideline. You know, a lot of people that, that have meant a lot to me in my life. Um, but, you know, whenever someone asks me about the Ravens, I always think about Clarence Brooks, uh, my dear friend. Uh, and he's the one that, and I've used it ever since, you know, said this game always has been and always will be about the players, and that's the truth. So in that essence, it's, it's game six. But I, like I said, I have a, you know, a, a, a deep love for a lot of people over there. Uh, you know, Steve Bashotti took care of my family for 10 years. Obviously, John and I have coached together, and I've coached with his dad, and I've known, known the family forever. He's like a brother. Um, and, uh, you know, Ozzie Newsom was a mentor, mentor for me for 10 years over there, and we, you know, helped build something that they're on their 15th year of doing right now. And, you know, the exciting part about coming here, it's year one. And uh, we just got to keep, keep it, staying with the process and where we're going and how we're going to get there. So all of those, you know, great things you talked about, why aren't you there? I guess that's it's never been fully explained, like what happened yeah. at the end of last year. Well, I, I think that it's, it's, it's just one of those things. It, I always believe that wherever you're at is where you're supposed to be. Uh, John and I had conversations. Uh, way back, but you know, before they made the announcement of about where we wanted to be and what we wanted to do, and you know, I know there was going to be a lot of movement in the NFL, and I thought myself, and it has re-energized me, uh, you know, for myself to go someplace new and 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 try to build it again. And uh, you know, he was, it was like I said, we're we're family, John and I are. It's it's. It was nothing negative. It was nothing. It was just. It was just time. Um, and when I say it's just time, it was just time for both of us. You, uh, you've dealt with a lot of secondary injuries there last year and finished last in pass defense. Um, you've dealt with a lot of injuries here this year in your secondary, and I think you're number eight in the, in the NFL right now. Um, why have you been able to be successful against the pass? Well, I think it, you know, there's there's a lot of things that you know that you have to handle with, you know, just the different things that and and that happen in a game first of all. But uh, you know, I, I give credit to to uh, Jerome Henderson and and Mike Trier. Jerome's in charge of the secondary, and uh, I mean they they just had guys you know stepping up and and just being ready to play. Um, and I think that. Uh, you know, we've handled the series of events well as a defense. And, uh, you know, knock on wood, we haven't, we haven't given up the, the big pass yet. You know what I mean? The long one. So that's, that's what we're trying to, to do is keep that number low. But we got a great challenge this week. You, uh, your, your defense plays with a lot of emotion, a lot of energy, you know, a lot of aggression. Do you personally this week try to – tone down the emotion because it's the Ravens, because it's those family ties, or do you kind of feed into that? You Are you talking about myself personally? Yeah, I guess you no. Your defense. Uh, your defense no. Is also yeah, I, I think that, you know, like I said, I, I want this game to be about them. It, it, you know, it has nothing to do, you know, because, and I, I think Dave's alluded to this earlier, you know, in coaching, you know, we're gypsies anyway. Now, I happen to be there for 10 years, which is a long time. But, it, you know, I was also in Oakland, uh, and I was also in Denver. So it's, you know, coaches, that's just the way our profession is, you know. Is, is there a little competitive spirit in you when you, you go play a team that you used to work for? Sure there is. I'm not going to deny that. 
everybody everybody knows that. But as far as circling the game and everything else, this is just the next game. And and that's we've had success approaching it that way. You know, we empty the tank on Sunday and we fill it up the rest of the week. And uh, you know, I, I just think that uh, that's how you have to approach it, and that's how. Because what I, you know, what I tell the players all the time is what I owe you during a game is my composure. That's where I show you my athleticism is keeping my composure. So you're always thinking about the next play. So, you know, there, there's some people who tell me that I need to be more animated on the sidelines. And you're not going to be animated if you're thinking about the next play, what you're going to call next. What, you know, it's, it's like, uh, you know, when, when you watch two people playing chess, if a guy makes a great move, he doesn't stand up out of the chair and chest bump somebody because he did it. You know, he's whatever. Wink, um, Wink um, when, you, when you did, when the decision was final that you would be leaving the Ravens and knowing that you were probably going to have another opportunity somewhere else, what, what were your emotions? Were you, were you sad? Were you, you happy. excited? Happy. happy and excited, yeah. When I left the Ravens? Yeah. Yeah, I was happy and excited about the next chapter. No, I mean, you're going to miss people, you know, I mean, you, you miss people, you, you grow close to people, you know, it's like my wife and I are originally from Ohio, our kids were born there, but Maryland's their home because we were there for 10 years. So, and, and my granddaughter Gigi is still back there. That's, I get FaceTimes now. Got called Pop Pop for the first time. That's a big thing, guys, in this case you don't know. Wait, was, Wait, was, uh, part, was part of it leaving to go somewhere new and help build something was part of it like it's no secret you want to be a head coach right was part of it allowing your defense and your scheme and the difference you make you know to not receive more credit but get highlighted more somewhere where maybe people will notice it no i i just i just like to see players have success and i i didn't think that deep into it no i mean that's a good question but i didn't i just i believe in in the scheme that we run how flexible it is, uh, you know. I've told you it's all it's positionless defense, and and it's the players that make it go. And you know, it's 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 just been a fun new challenge, and it's re-energized me. What is your relationship like with Lamar, and what have you, without giving away your secrets, of course, told your players about that challenge this weekend? Shout out to Lamar. He gave me a shout out, so I had to give a shout out back to him. Um, my relationship with Lamar, I love the guy. Uh, I think, you know, that it's another great challenge. You know, we went from, you know, Aaron Rodgers, league MVP, to now we're going to Lamar Jackson, league MVP, uh, back in 19. So I was with him when he did that. And he is an unbelievable player. And for anybody that wants to say anything that he's not, okay. Because he's unbelievable. And he's playing at an MVP uh, caliber right now, like he was back in 19. All right, and it's it's def it's different sitting in the chair now instead of practice when you're watching it. And it's like I told uh, Drew Wilkins, all those times we're going against him, and the guy said, "Oh, I got him," you know, because you got to stay away from the quarterback. Oh, I had him. We're gonna find that out on Sunday, whether or not they got him or not. You know, I know it's you know it's it's not you know it's different guys, but it's the truth with him because. Not only can he beat you with his arm, uh, which he's throwing the ball really well, um, but uh, he can beat you with his legs, his mind, and everything else because he's, he's playing at a high level. Wait, what have you uh, told your guys about the way roughing the passer is being officiated now? How do you teach your guys about not doing full body weight? I'm sure you've seen the two plays that have right. gotten a lot of attention. It's, it, you know, we, we don't make the rules. We just play by them. And... You know, once again, it gets into one of those situations when there's a call. It doesn't matter what I think about the calls. You know, I, I don't allow my ego to get that big that I think that, you know, that this is that and this is that. You know, I mean, that, it just doesn't matter. And like I said, Roger Goodell is not going to call and say, stop the game, Wink's pissed because this this roughing the passer deal. So you just, you just got to try to uh, tackle the way the rule states. And, you know, it, 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 everybody makes mistakes now. You know, that, those things happen fast. I'm talking about for the officials. And you just got to move on. Because if you sit there and go nuts for the next three plays, once again, it's three plays you're giving away.